How are you guys doing? Where are we? We're in Boston? Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. So uh, I'm Carson. That's uh, my co-host, Annie. It's good to meet you, Benny. Hi, guys. Wow. Look, you're, I want to be where you are right now. I got to tell you, it is, a, uh, it is a wonderful place. I'm actually down on Cape Cod, about an hour south of Boston. Um, we just uh, we just got a place down here in the middle of the pandemic. We we live in the city, and it just got to be too much for us mentally. We had to get out, so we uh, we bought a little like a little fixer upper stuck in 1986, and so we we've been coming down here on the weekends to kind of work in the yard and work on the house. It's been nice for. Oh them. I know it's awesome. It's so quiet. I'm not used to it. I know. I like your basement too. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> What's funny is Benny, she just she just moved into her own place. How long has it been, Annie? Uh two months I've lived in my own apartment. But and she has, this, <laughs> she has and to I come back. Where do you used to live? I have three roommates and so I was like, I always just go back to my parents' house because there's always at least one room I can do it in. But the house next to me, they're completely doing over like completely gutted it, building a third floor, and I've been trying to move stuff around to get a, like a quiet space in my house. So I'm in my, my brother's old bedroom right now. <laughs> oh my gosh, nostalgia. Yeah. Mm. So Benny, let's talk about, uh, quickly I wanna talk about the song Lonely with Justin. Obviously, I mean, it has just caught fire with the performance and the video, I saw, you, I saw you there in the video, coming in to tell a young Justin to come out on stage. Exactly. But uh, man, that performance on SNL over the weekend, it looked to me like it was pretty overwhelming for Justin at the end of the performance. He just kind of took a knee and, and was just in that moment and, and couldn't even really stand up. Can you talk about that a little bit? Man. I, I think just overall is just surreal on so many levels. Like for, for me, it was, it was the, you know, it was the first time we really kind of ventured out since March, you know? So it's like, you know, and it, and it, it's strange, you know, cause you're around people for the first time and, and, you know, obviously SNL did great, like with the protocol and like every time you walk through the door, you're getting tested. So it's like, we all, we all felt safe. But it's uh, it's just a strange feeling that like you're like around people again. You're like, oh my gosh, these are human beings. And then I think just like on top of that, doing the performance, it's like, look, we could have gone and done like a ton of lights and like a thing like this, but we 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 just thought it was so important to have it be this raw strip back like the song and he look i'm a fan just like you so when i'm up there and i see justin come up and he hits those runs that he didn't hit in the normal song i'm like oh my god i'm like don't look up don't mess up like i'm i'm doing the same thing you guys are and honestly it's like during rehearsals he's just he's singing a song like so it's like okay and then like when the performance happened it's like he like he is that song and it's like and it's you know you can feel it. you can hear the lump in his throat you can and like when at the end like when he had that feeling he just gave me a hug it's like none of that stuff was planned that's just like real that's who he is just like in the moment why is it that uh so many artists seem to open up to you benny i mean i'm not going to go through the list of everybody you've had a chance to write with and produce with, but there must be something very special about your relationship with these very creative people because they keep opening up their, inner, their innermost parts of their lives in creating this music. Why, why, why do you think that is? For me, it's just like, I don't work with anyone that's not my friend. So like, if you're not, if, if I don't feel comfortable having you like, come over to dinner and like meet my mom or something like like most of my like a lot of the artists I work with have like slept over at my house and like and like gone on trips with me like we're, we're I'm just it's like I'm friends with the people and and I, like I wouldn't be able to work with someone without being friends with them because in the studio session it's like someone will come in and I'm like so what do you want to write about you know how you feel and they'll be like oh you know I was just on tour and this and that. And I'm like, shut up. How are you really feeling? Like, what's really going on? Like, what's really, 
to dive in and write about this. I mean, essentially, you're just a therapist. I'm sorry, there's a biplane flying over my house right now. I apologize. <laughs> Can you hear it? I, I, can't, I can't even hear it. It's me. There's a, we have a, a, a grass airfield not far from our house, and there's one plane that does, and it's an old Red Baron type biplane. And like once a day, it flies over my house. <laughs> it's Benny. I didn't, I didn't hear it. Don't worry. Oh, good. Oh, good. Benny, I know you worked on Lonely with Phineas as well. I know he kind of collaborated on it. And I feel like both of you guys are the kind of people that you don't necessarily do things for recognition, of course. But it's just so interesting to me that you especially are behind some of the biggest songs in music in the last 10 years. And I just want to know for you, is it weird to kind of not be as recognized as some of recognizable as some of these artists but you're the one behind it like what does that feel like to you no it's look it's a, it's so funny because like you know i'm 15 years into it so it's so it's like for me it's like this i the point of entry is different for every person so it's like you know people will come up to the, me in the street and be like oh my god your first song, East Side, like, like, and so some people learned about me then. Some people will say, oh my gosh, like, I've been following you since the beginning of your career. Like, I'm a songwriter, this and that. And then some people, you know, see me on Dave and they'll be like, oh my God, you make music too? And they think <laughs> I'm just like an actor and they didn't even know. Mm -hmm. And like, they'll discover me through that show or like, you know, my cooking show. And it's like, so like, it's like every, you know, some people don't even know I make music. Like, like they come up to me. Yeah, yeah. Like some people that come up to me will be like, oh my God, I love that cookie show is so funny. And, and they're like, and, and they'll be like, hey, do you make music? They, it says that you make music. Like, so it's just like, I'm, for me, it's like, I don't really care. Like, I'm just happy I get to do what I love. And like, uh, I, I, however you know me or like me, if I could help make your day a little better. That's a win. Okay, so I know that you are pretty good friends with Ed Sheeran, and, and we've had a, a long and wonderful relationship with Ed. And uh, I know he won't mind me telling the story the last time he was here because he told it to us while we were doing the interview. He, he just kind of seemed out of sorts a little bit. He's usually pretty, like, get after it, and he was kind of dragging a little bit. And at one point, we finally said, Ed, are you hungover? <laughs> and he said, well, as a matter of fact, I went to a Nickelback concert last night, and I ended up backstage drinking tequila with Chad Kroger. And I guess that album for him, the Nickelback album was, you know, one of those, one, you know, one of those memorable albums for him. So do you have any good Ed Sheeran stories? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, so many. I mean, one time, you know, one time we were in Canada and we got asked, if we wanted to come to, it was Drake and Future's album release party. And we were like, yeah, sure. We had nothing to do. And it was like, <laughs> of course you're going to go. You're, of course you're going to go there. And like, you know, uh, uh, Ed had never met Drake at that point. So we, we go, it's in like this warehouse. We party like all night. We're in Canada. And, and then, you know, we gotta, we gotta hop on the bus after because it's time to, you know, go to the next city. And the way it works is when you go from Canada back into America, you have about like two hours usually on tour. And then what happens is you, they wake you up and you have to get off the bus and you have to like give them your passports and stuff. So, so you have this choice, like, do I want to stay up? and wait through and then go to sleep after or do I want to go to sleep? So first of all, we were starving and we're like, we got to get Domino's pizza. Like, because <laughs> we were like, it's the only thing that's going to be open. We get to the place, it's closed. Ed and I are banging, we're please, please. The guy sees us, he lets us come in. He lets us make a pizza. We actually go in, make a pizza. Then we get back on the bus and we're like, oh, let's do something. And we, go to the back and we start writing the beginnings of a song and we actually we actually finished it the next day and that song was love yourself 
So that was, so that was like, You're that kidding. was, that, that was a little, dude, I have so many stories with Ed. Cause as a, a person who's a friend, like it's like Ed and I, we didn't even work like the first five times we met each other, like hung out. Mm -hmm. Like he's, he's, he's the best hang. He's the best dude. Yeah. Like, like he, he's, he's, you know, he's one of my closest friends. He's amazing. <laughs> what kind of pizza did you make? <laughs> I think it was a cheese. I think it was a cheese pizza. It just we, went we, easy. We, it, it it definitely did not. It looked. It looked. It, it was. It was deformed. It wasn't. It wasn't. It, it was not a good pizza. It would taste delicious. <laughs> I hard. I barely remember, but it tasted great. Ed is one of those guys that like when you go out with, like it's like you're gonna have like a crazy night, but you're gonna need like three Tylenols the next morning. <laughs> I love that. Staying on the topic of food, because uh, first of all, I want to let you know you're one of my favorite Instagram follows. I think your captions and just everything are so on point. You're so funny. Everybody should follow you on Instagram. And I saw you posted with your girlfriend that you made a chicken parm dinner and you had chicken parm sweatshirts. First of all, I need to know where you got that sweatshirt because as a chicken parm enthusiast, um, I need that. Second of all, I need to know if you're going to write and produce a song about said chicken parm. <laughs> no, okay, Annie what? goes out to Annie goes out to dinner with her father father every Friday night to I'm an Italian it place night in and, like and a couple eat, hours. Yeah, and eats chicken parm, and that's every Friday. Are you serious? Every Friday. Okay, so one, uh, her uh, her um. She she sells them. She sells them on her uh, on her Instagram. She oh. made them up. They're amazing. It's like the best thing. They're so comfortable. And then, um, uh, and then, am I gonna make a song about chicken parm? I'll tell you one thing. Chicken parm has definitely been eaten many times with with while well, I've been making songs. I literally had a chicken parm yesterday. We did a we did me and uh, Justin did a pop up in los angeles where we made a chicken parm sandwich and gave it away and like don't raised a bunch of money for uh active minds for mental health awareness a day ago so that's how that's how much i'm in chicken parm land let's go <laughs> uh, hey benny i make a good chicken parm i mean oh, next time you're in la i'll make you chicken parm oh i would love that <laughs> with our chicken parm sweatshirts yes let's go <laughs> hey benny what song has most surprised you of yours you know, you, you work on a song, all the blood, sweat, tears, pizza, chicken parm, and you get done with it and you're like, ah, that just, it, it just never got there for me. But then for whatever reason, it still gets released. I mean, there's a famous story about the song, uh, Africa by Toto. They didn't want to release the song, the label forced them to do it. And obviously look what happened to the song. Is there a song like that that you worked on that you just didn't see it becoming as big as it did? So many, so many things happen. I mean, look, take my own song, for example. Like, it was so funny. When I first started becoming an artist, I was like, okay, I'll put out music and then like maybe like three or four years into it, like I'll get a song that everyone likes and I'll build it up. And, like, I had no idea that East Side was going to be as big as it was. Like, mm -hmm. it's like, it, there's so many songs. I didn't know Rihanna Diamonds was going to be as big as it was. Uh, I didn't know Love Yourself would be as big as it was. I didn't know TikTok was gonna be as big as it was. Like, I, I you know, it's, it's, I just make the songs because I love them. And like, I just hope that other people feel the same way that I do because, because of the feeling it gives me. And then if it's big, that's like a, that's like a added cherry on top. How come we don't have a new Rihanna album? Have you, have you chatted with her? We, <laughs> we need a reggaeton album from Rihanna, please. No, but I want Rihanna to release a song every day. Me She's the too. Best. Of my life, for the rest of my existence, I need a song from her. Mm. She's so good. Mm -hmm. Benny, well, you've I, been... Oh, go ahead, Annie. Sorry. Benny, you've been very vocal on social media just about the importance of voting and exercising your right to vote, um, which I think is so cool because so many of your fans are younger and this might be their first time voting in election. And I want to know, do you remember your first experience voting and what that was like for you? Yeah, it's that, look, it's that time where you're like, you know, everyone, like, 
everyone's just like, oh, well, is my vote gonna count? Is this gonna happen? Is this gonna work? And it's like, it's, it, it's one of those rights where it's like, I get to make this decision. Like I get, I get to potentially influence, not potentially, I get to influence who our next leader is going to be. And it's like, look, as we've seen, I, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not one to get too political, but as we've seen, it's like, you see what happens when you have a real, pardon my friend, shitty fucking president. And it's like, and, and it can really affect so many things in our life, and especially when we're going through like a disaster like we are now, having the right leadership in charge is, and having the right leader in charge is such an important thing to do. And it's like, I'm not even like that political. I just can recognize that it's like, okay, I've lived for 32 years and I've seen a bunch of different presidents and, and having the right president really does make a difference. It really does. Even if, even if you're like, oh, well, they don't even, they can't even do that much. Like it really makes such a difference to have someone with like a level head that can understand. It's like, you know, like when Obama was president, like you were like, okay, okay, I feel a little bit comfortable, you know, like, you, you, like, I feel like we're going to get through this, you know, and it's like, you just, we just need, we just need the right person in charge, and I really think, you know, wh whoever it is that you believe in, just mm -hmm. go out and vote, and it's like, it's like, you, even if we believe in the wrong thing, the a different thing, it, I think it's so important for everyone to exercise the right to vote, and to potentially try to make a difference, you know? All right, one Sorry, last question. Wrap after one. Oh, I, you know what? Okay. Yeah. Oh, we need to wrap it up. I didn't okay, get the. Give me your last one. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> okay, hold on. I I had it on my phone and I didn't have the phone open and I apologize. It's give okay. Me. Take your time. That's no. Okay. Here hurry up. Take <laughs> your time. Hurry up. Hurry. Nope. Now I can't find it. Of course, I'm just gonna let it go. I'll wrap it up like that. How professional of me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that feels great. Look at you. You're the most professional. You're in, the, you're in the best place in the world, uh, and and you're you're doing it, man. I love that. Uh, some hype, some hype talk. My uh, my Matt talk with with Benny Blanco. Benny Blanco. I love that. <laughs> yes. Well, it's great to meet you. I can't wait to you guys are back out on the road and we can get you into Boston and and hang out and maybe eat some chicken parm somewhere, Annie. Yes. Let's do it. You better. I'll I'll, I'll come cook in your parents' house. <laughs> <laughs> all right thanks benny see you soon all right guys all right bye, bye